Hi, this is Rudy Mankey from USC for Nature Notes. Welcome to another edition of Parents Outdoors. There's a bird just over me. That was a common night oak doing his boom. Primary flight feathers vibrate to make that call, that, that sound that you just heard. That beep beep is his call. But just above me on a tree, and as you can see, I'm right beside Wildlife Drive. Uh, I'm not going into any RCW red cockade woodpecker clusters today because we're in breeding season. But there's a um, there's a cluster that's foraging right here along the road. Uh, and I wanted to talk about this bird. This is the bird that gave the, my career a start, uh, red cockade woodpecker. When I started, it was Picoides borealis. Uh, now it is Dryobates borealis. <laughs> Just right beside me. specialized bird uh, and what you find is a lot of endangered species like the red cockaded woodpecker tend to be specialists generalists like crows and ravens and corvids uh, they can do whatever just about wherever but you get these niche specialists like the red cockaded woodpecker which prefers old growth longleaf pine forest open fire maintained and that's where you start getting uh, issues with uh, endangered species. Uh, they're specialists. Add on top of that the fact that we have absolutely decimated the lonely pine ecosystem. Uh, it is down to about 4% of what it was when the Europeans came over. And there's less than 15,000 of these guys left. And uh, whenever the Europeans came over, there were probably over a million and a half of these birds. There's less than 15,000, and uh, I need to look at my records. I'm not sure. I've banded, I don't know, uh, over 100 or something like that. I'm, I'm nowhere near, like, I'm nowhere near like Larry Wood or, or anybody like that or Nancy Jordan, who is the phenomenal biologist here, uh, who I love dearly. Uh, Nancy has banded probably, you know, an appreciable percentage of these guys in her career. I cannot leave this refuge without talking about the red cockade woodpecker. Let's see if I can get some footage and we'll take a little look. God, this is awesome. I just, I mean, I'm always gonna love this, always. And book right now, catch your buzzing behind me. Mickey Duck at a summer teenager. Pine warblers and towies, eastern towies here. Uh, why would we have pine warblers? Hear the squeaky dog toy sound? Brown headed nut hatches. Uh, we also have a prairie warbler. Up, 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 up. Up on it. Let me sing it again. That. Up, 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 up. That's uh, my friend Drew Lanham's favorite bird, prairie warbler. Uh, this clearly is a member of the pea family, a legume, a fabaceae. Um, and it has these. Beautiful blue-green peel flower uh, leaves, not flowers, uh, but this would have a, a light blue to dark blue flower earlier in the spring. This is in the genus Baptisia. This is one of the indigos uh, that you see so common. Uh, already going to seed here, and one of the defining uh, things that you can look for with indigo, and here it is right here, is later on in the summer, and. Uh, Actually, before fall here in South Carolina, these leaves will die and uh, leave these ashen gray uh, leaves. Uh, they're not brown at all. They are this ashen gray color. Um, 
And that is one of the defining characteristics of Baptisia genus. Uh, Baptisia, by the way, is from the Greek for to dip, which uh, is in reference to uh, what you do when you dye fabric with this. You dip it into uh, an indigo bath to dye it. D-Y-E uh, dye it. But yeah, this is Baptisia. This is one of the indigos. Wow. I'm telling you, this place has so many stories. So many stories. Extraordinary absolutely ordinary anything but Um, this is a really cool plant. Uh, it is one that doesn't get a lot of attention, although it is in a group of uh, plants that get a lot of attention. Um, this is one of the milkweeds. Uh, we can see opposite leaves, very much a milkweed flower. Uh, this is Asclepius tomentosa, uh, often called tuba milkweed or velvet-leafed milkweed. Uh, and sure enough, tomentosa, the species name means hairy or velvety and the leaves are a li little bit not much a little bit hairy <laughs> it's a red cockaded woodpecker just flew in and is foraging here that's cool um, but asclepius uh, was the demigod uh, of healing in greek mythology um, and he is still revered to this day as a matter of fact the uh, symbol for the American Medical Association, the staff with the snake wrapped around it, is the staff of Asclepius. Uh, and the snake uh, is, the, uh, is a symbol of the snake that whispered all the secrets of healing uh, in the year of Asclepius. He was a son of Apollo, and he was killed by Zeus because Zeus was uh, threatened by his abilities. Uh, it was said that uh, Asclepius could even raise the dead. He was that good at healing. He would use Medusa's blood for that, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but uh, Asclepius uh, plants, uh, the reason they're in the genus called Asclepius in reference to the demigod of healing in Greek mythology is uh, these plants uh, have been used uh, all the way through Native American times for everything from uh, asthma uh, to blood treatments, uh, you know, blood ailments and so forth. Uh, so Asclepius tomentosa. Um, this will grow, uh, a lot of times it'll grow 10, 12 inches tall. This one is probably about, nine, oh, here, Rick, I get a woodpecker. That's cool, man. Um, but yeah, this one's about, uh, I don't know, about nine inches tall or so. So it could uh, get another three inches up uh, and put off tons of these flowers. Uh, but what I really like about it is it will put off uh, fairly good sized uh, opposite leaves uh, and can host a, a few caterpillars, monarch caterpillars. This is the larval food source of monarch. All Asclepius are. All milkweeds. Um, <laughs> I love it, man. Um, so I don't know why this one doesn't get the attention that a lot of other ones do. I mean, yes, yeah, not, you know, as flashy or, or colorful as a lot of the other uh, milkweeds, uh, but it is a pretty good bang for your buck. Uh, these flowers, as you guys know, uh, that you no know, milkweeds and asclepius, these flowers will get pollinated and they're, you know, they have this trigger in them uh, whenever they get pollinated, which is really cool. And we'll do, we'll do a, an episode just on milkweeds, uh, but they will eventually turn into seed pods that will throw up uh, and out uh, the, the uh, silky seeds that will ride the wind. Uh, and uh, if you guys will allow me, uh, let's take a look right over here at one that is going to seed. Look at there. So Asclepius tomentosa. Uh, you didn't think we would just learn about plants. We'd learn about Greek mythology. We'd learn about, you know, potential medical uh, stuff. And the staff of Asclepius is the American Medical Association symbol. So yeah, and right behind me, I've got a couple stages of longleaf pine. Here's one firmly in the grass stage. Here's one just coming out. And here is one that has been out for, you know, better part of a year or two, right here. Uh, and behind us was a red cockade of woodpecker. <laughs> 